but I thought we found some ways to run the football as the game wore on. Uh, we were staying on the field. Uh, thank you. We stayed on the field for the most part. We're just trying to go through. I haven't looked at the stats. I haven't had my glasses. I ain't able to see anything. Um, you know, six of fourteen again. One of one on fourth down. So you're, you know, seven of fifteen, which is which is you know right at fifty percent or close to it, which is pretty decent um, from that standpoint. But we ran the ball. Of course, Kevin had the long run there at the end. It was good to be able to put the game away uh, when we had an opportunity. I thought defensively, we had the two passes in the first half. They hit us in a three deep beater uh, from the bunch, which is a good call on their part for what we were in. Uh, I thought John got a little tangled up there on the sideline with their guy, but we were able to have two good red zone stops in the first half, which is really good. Disappointed with the one drive in the third quarter. I mean, you, you got to find a way to get off the field. We missed the tackle coming out of the middle of the field. We don't leverage the formation on the bubble. Uh, you know, just a couple plays that we just got to clean up against really good people uh, in order to play cleaner in the secondary. Uh, but again, I like how our guys responded and handled the elements and all the stuff that's going on. It's kind of like I talked to Jeremy Pruitt when we played first play Tennessee before the game and Dan Mullen last week and, and, and Derek today. I mean, it, people have no idea what's going on behind closed doors with COVID and uh, the different things you're dealing with with your young men. And I appreciate how our guys are handling, um, you know, the situation that we're going through. So, and I'll open it up for any questions. David with the first one. <clears throat> Hey, Will, uh, you mentioned the running game. Just uh, what did you guys see from Vanderbilt's defense that allowed you to have this much success today? Well, I think we did a really good job adjusting in the second quarter and then in the second half. You know, we came in and we changed some things up that we actually didn't bring into the game, and Mike and his offensive staff did a really good job of, of adding some runs at halftime that we felt like based on some things they were doing to us, which was different, uh, to take advantage of those things. When you're able to run, you know, what was it, right at, you know, 290 yards, that's 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 a heck of a day running the football, no, no matter who you're playing against. So, again, I th credit our staff and our players came out and executed because there's some runs there that we hadn't really practiced a lot of uh, that we were able to, to, to go out and execute, which not to say that we don't have them in our package, but, so, you know, some things that we didn't think we were going to feature going in the game, and our staff did a good job, but our players did a better job of executing. Ben? Well, obviously, you guys offensively have a little bit of a slow start compared to the last two games. But what do you kind of see from your guys on a personal side – responding and, and turning turning it around the, the way they did despite sort of that, that early setback? Well, we came in with a game plan to be very aggressive early in the game uh, to try and take, take some shots. Uh, the first shot to Xavier, uh, second down play was another opportunity. Uh, so we wanted to come in and be aggressive. We ended up being three and out. We're willing to take those. If you're going to be aggressive down the field to take some shots down the field, those are the things you've got to do to be successful, to get people off of you, to f figure out what we need to do in the run game. And uh, more than anything, let the defensive coordinator know on the other sideline, we're going to take those shots in games. Mike Kuba. Well, I know it's tough to tell right now without going back and watching the film, but just from what you saw from your perspective today about the, the tackling, you know, what would you what would you have to say about the defense in terms of them responding today after the last week's performance? Well, it was really poor. They're out of the middle of the field and on the on the little stop screen, or not screen, but uh, the RPO that they ran where they scored on, that was two, two missed tackles you can have. And, One's too many. Bottom line is one's too many. And uh, we got to continue to clean things up, and that's what we're going to continue to do. But, uh, you know, again, at the tackle last week, I don't want to say we missed 12 tackles. We had one play that was awful. And everybody wants to point to one play and say that was the, the whole deal. But at the end of the day, 12 missed tackles against good skill, you know, depending on how those missed tackles happened, which that was a big, big gainer. No doubt about it. Josh Kendall. Will, just to confirm, you took – when Vandy was down here at third and goal, you took the time out to keep Ernest in the game, correct? Well, one, and then two, I was I, – I thought we were confused on the call. Okay. And uh, when they lined up in the formation, they lined up, and I didn't really like what we had based on that, and I felt like there was a little confusion, so I took the time out. And can you talk about the way Ernest played today? He made he ended up making the stop on fourth down. He had 13 yeah. or 14 tackles. Ernest is a really good football player, you know, and at the end of the day – the guy's got great energy. He's got great juice. He's really smart. He gets us in all of our fronts and all everything that we do. We put a lot on him uh, in order to for us to function defensively. Uh, so you know, I think I think he's played well in the first three ball games. Uh, we're going to have a very high standard on him, you know, and that's what I told him. I said I think he played okay in the first two ball games. I said, but that, not to the standard you need to play to. We hadn't watched the film yet, but I know he he flashed and made some plays that he needs to make. 
hey, well, how would you evaluate your defensive line's performance today, and how much pressure does that take off a secondary that's obviously struggled at times when they're getting to the quarterback pretty quickly? Well, I, Colin, I think that's big, especially when you rush four guys. If you can rush four guys, you're going to have a good defensive football team as far as in the passing game is concerned. J.J.'s been a really a good rusher for us. I thought we got some good push inside with Jabari and Zach at times. I thought Aaron had a good pressure. I'm not positive, but I think Jordan Birch, had a, we had a stunt on where he came free. Uh, so we had some guys flash. I'd like to watch the film first, but I know that, you know, the first third down, J.J. gets the pressure. I think it was a, a sack strip, has an opportunity for a turnover there. We got to be able, you know, when it gets to third down, you can't bring five all the time and six all the time. You got to be able to pressure a four and play coverage and get the ball quarterback off the spot and get the ball out of his hands. With with Nick having that early drop, and of course he's had some of the issues earlier in the season. What did that say about him making that big play for y'all coming off the goal line? And I think he had three catches on that drive to to lead you on catches and, and yards. Did, today. What did you say about him to come back? Colin did a great job in hotting him uh, over there on our sideline in a critical third down situation there in the third quarter, I believe. But, uh, you know, Nick's a good football player. He's got to clean up some things uh, assignment-wise and clean up catching the football consistently well. And he's more than capable. He's a good football player. Uh, you know, always tough coming off a, a, a severe injury like he had. Uh, so he's dealing with that as well. So, but he's a good football player. You got to continue to come on, and we need more guys at that position to continue to come for us. Yeah, sorry about that, Coach. Uh, what, what would you kind of attribute the success? Another big day, getting off the field on third down and uh, and, and fourth down, and staying on it in the same situations. What's kind of been the key uh, behind you guys having such great success on third and fourth down this year? Well, I think we've done a nice job when we rush four. And I think when we have brought pressure, we've done a good job of attacking the protection that they're giving us. Uh, I think we had the quarterback unsettled a little bit. We had him moving his feet and getting him off the spot, which once you get a guy off the spot, it's tougher. And I thought we covered well, uh, pretty well today on the back end for the most part, especially in the critical third down situations. Were you happy overall with the way the secondary responded? I know that you, you said you challenged those guys a little bit this week. Well, again, we there's some things that we still need to clean up, believe me, especially that one drive. So we'll go back. we got a high standard for those guys and how we need to play. Uh, we still have a lot of things to get better in the secondary. Well, you had a lot of young guys play, um, specifically second, third quarter. Um, um, Jordan Birch, uh, Tonka Hemingway, and um, Shiloh all played a lot defensively. Was that the game plan going in, or was that something that you guys kind of saw um, starting off? Well, I've, I mean, the game changed itself a little bit as as as, we, as when it went twenty four seven, and then uh, and then and then thirty one seven. But I think that or twenty seven seven. But I think that we had a plan for Tonka and J Jordan need to continue to play more. They need to continue to grow. Uh, they're getting better and better every time out, and 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 they're going to continue. You know, it was great to see Mo Kaba in the game there uh, playing linebacker. Shiloh, you know, continues to come on for us at the safety position is an integral part of what we do. Special teams, Vershawn Lee got the start at right tackle. Uh, got to continue to bring him along. Jasden came in and did some things for a first-year player. Uh, Ja'Kai Moore continues to do some good things for us at right tackle. Uh, you know, DeCarion's carry was big. We, we, we had kind of dialed that up early in the game and didn't get to it. Uh, being able to get to that point there uh, from that standpoint. So, again, guys at new positions, first-year players, guys that don't have as much experience. And, you know, the situation we're in right now, you know, we got to continue to play the game. We got to continue to play, call it the way we would normally call it, no matter who's in the game, because what the situation we're going through, we never know who's going to be up and who's going to be down. So it, you don't ever know. Guy walked to me Friday afternoon and said, so-and-so's down. Well, I'm sitting there thinking, you got to be kidding me. Well, that's the situation we're in right now. And we're all going through it, uh, but you, our guys got to be ready to play. Uh, yeah, Will, uh, can you share? Why? I can't hear you, Phil. Oh. Tiger Phil, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, You're not getting reception in Pickens County. <laughs> um, I don't know why you can't hear me. I'm unmuted. How about now? No? Can't hear you, sorry. Let's go to Kim Gaskins. Why can't you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey, Joe, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? 
All right, can you hear me? Hello? Nothing? You gotta be kidding me. Hello? Come on. Check one. Nothing? God dang it. Something is up with my mic, I guess. Nothing? I can hear you now. Okay. I, I don't know what was going on there. My apologies. Appreciate it, Coach. Um, So you mentioned earlier just about the tough conditions of what's going on behind closed doors in a season like this every game. Uh, but then going into this game specifically with the conditions on the field, the rain, just how much can a win like this help your team mentally moving forward this season? Well, right now, any win helps. And regardless of where it is, at the end of the day, um, you know, our guys stuck together. We had one of our best practices of the year on Tuesday. Not so much on Wednesday, but came back Thursday. We're pretty sharp. This guy, these guys work hard. Been really proud of them how they've you know handled this whole duration of what we've been through, starting back during the spring, going into the summer, heading into into the season now. And uh, each week's another great opportunity for us, and that's the way we're going to look at it. Enjoy our victory today, and, and start on a really good Auburn team on Sunday. Uh, and that's the way we'll approach things. But uh, you know, any win is good right now. Can you hear me now, Coach? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Uh, can you share why Mukwamu was not available in the second half? What's that? Can you share why Mukwamu was not available in the second half? Who's that? Mukwamu, Israel. Yeah, he'll be all right. I, I Gene, I can't get you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> hey, one for one for eleven on third down defense for the second time this season. Is that were you seeing that kind of clutch stuff in fall camp? And what has been the key to that kind of stuff on defense? Well, I think Gene rushing four guys has been the most important thing. And you got you we rushed four early in the game and we were getting home. And when you're able to play coverage and rush four and get the quarterback off the spot, then that's that's helps you be really good in the pass game. Uh, and when we did pr pressure. I think we did a good job game planning to get our guys in one-on-one -on -one matchups so they could win in one-on-one. -on -one. And so our guys are winning in one-on-one, -on -one and we're rushing four guys, and we got a chance to be pretty good in those loose-down situations one minute and third down. Coach, Kevin Harris today, another big game. Uh, of all the running backs you've coached and seen, um, where does he rank in terms of when he gets to that second level? Uh, and is able to kind of break away with that speed that he has there. Well, it was impressive today. Uh, again, Kevin's a guy that is, is gets better as the game goes. You get tired of hitting him. There's nothing really soft on his body. He's got a short stature, but he's a very muscular guy. He runs with high knees. Uh, he gets behind his pads, and when you you take him on, there's nothing there that's soft to hit. So he's a guy that wears on wears on people as the game continues to go. He's caught the ball extremely well out of the backfield. Uh, has continued to do that again today for the most part. They lost the one screen pass over on their sideline. But, um, you know, really proud of Kevin. I think you saw our sideline erupt on the 88 yarder. I mean, I thought we were going to get a penalty. But those guys are so happy for him. They're happy for good guys that have success and do good things. No different than to carry on. Uh, I mean, our sideline erupts when those two guys score touchdowns, which is great to see. Happy for those guys. But, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see our guys congratulating those guys. Well, uh, do you expect here Thomas Jalen Dickerson to be available next week? Yeah, we'll see. Well, uh, how, how much of a challenge was it to kind of have to play mix and match in the secondary without Israel, without Jalen, and trying to – and what did you see from kind of the depth that you were able to play there? Well, you got a lot of guys playing a lot of spots. I mean, you got RJ playing three positions, nickel, dime, and safety. Uh, you got John Dixon playing nickel and corner. You got Cam playing corner. You got JC playing nickel and corner. Uh, you got Shiloh playing different spots. And then we're trying to get different matchups based on their personnel in man and some zone situations. So there's a lot going on uh, with those guys. Um, we handled it well today for the most part. We got to continue to handle that as we look forward so we can get our best matchups in third down situations. Take two more, Will, in a, in a weird season, this felt like maybe the weirdest environment yet because you had so few 
fans here in the stadium. You got, a lot of your guys didn't have family. How do you think that they handled the self-motivation of it? Really good. We had a lot of energy and juice on the sideline. We told our guys all week, you know, the atmosphere and what it was going to probably be like. And we certainly, when we come to Nashville, the, the, South, the Gamecocks travel. Uh, it's garnet and black on that entire visitor sideline. So that was unusual for us. Uh, but I told the guys that had been here before and they, they understood it. You know, I never forget my first game at South Carolina and that old visitor to side was, was garnet and black. And um, I just hate the situation we're in right now, but this is kind of where we are. At least we're able to play football and, uh, and I appreciate our fans. I wish they could have been here with us today. Last question. On the two field goals. You, know, that you got to do something about your hair, man. I mean, this is like, I mean, you have no pride at all, you know? Just stick a comb in it. Just pr pull it through. Brillo pad it, you know? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it's raining here, and I had to run out and get a, an umbrella for my girlfriend's uh, dad and stepmom. So I, I'm actually a hero and why, why I'm looking like this right now. There but, you go. All right. Uh, anyway, call. with, with the made field goals from Parker, uh, what were the issues there? Because you all had to use the timeout and one, and, and there was a – Delay of game well, and at the end of the first half, what, what, what kind of We happened? were in range, and we had a shift. It was less than fourth and five. We, we tried to draw them off sides. It didn't work. And I would, instead of burning a timeout in the second half, we just took a delay of game. Uh, that's all that was. And then we had a player not stay on the field that's on the field goal team uh, in that situation. I had to call timeout there. But the other one, we were, we were trying to draw them off sides, and we didn't work. Okay. The, and at the end of the, the first half, when, after Kevin's run to me. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we want to take a shot to the goal line. We're calling it out, and we've got three players mouthing off with their guys, and the clock runs out. We have no opportunity. We've got no timeouts left. We're trying to take a shot in the end zone. It's fourth down. I said, I told Mike, run it down. Let's go take a shot. Let's go Berlin. Take a shot in the end zone. And, and our guys are mouthing off. We, 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 we address that at halftime, and it'll be addressed tomorrow. All right. And it was their guys, too, guys. so don't just blame our guys. Right? right. I wasn't right. blaming anybody. It's their guys too, so don't blame our guys. I wasn't. I wasn't saying it was just y'all. I'm just kidding with you. I'm getting sensitive. Well, you make fun of my hair all the time. I'm. I'm a little touchy. That's all right.